What's going on guys? This is Empty Box and this is D-Team Experience 2014 where today we're going to be doing a short 11 lap race against a full field of AI set to 107%. We're going to be using the mandatory pit stop rule as you can probably guess. On screen there we can select our tire compound that we're going to start. We're starting from 11th position so we're going to use the option tires. But just a little uh, description, yes this tire sidewalls do actually change. Uh, depending on which tire compounds that you're using, as you would expect. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. But, uh, yes, that is a new feature to Race Room Racing Experience, specifically to the DTM Experience 2014, as well as coming soon, very soon, ADAC GT Masters 2014, which we'll probably end up taking a look at when that is available as well. But, uh, well, let me go ahead and put it this way right now up front. Wasn't necessarily a huge fan of DTM Experience 2013 because it really wasn't necessarily that great. It was okay if I was a fan of the DTM series. I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more, but I'm not. So my standards were quite low. As in, this game's been out for like a month, I think. And it's taken me this long, even though I had the seasons pass from being an early adopter of DTM 2013. So this was free and it took me a month. My expectations were that low and my expectations were definitely surpassed. So let's go ahead and select the option tires and then we'll get on into the race. Alright, we're starting in 11th position. 11 lap race, we will have to make a pit stop in the middle third, I believe is the rule, which is so incredibly German. Couldn't just say you have to be like 5 laps into the race or 5 laps before the end of the race. No, it's got to be the middle third. Now racing at the Hungaro Ring, which I specifically have chosen this track for a reason. Because, well, I hate this track and it kind of sums up my thoughts on this game pretty much entirely. Really had no expectations, didn't expect to like it, didn't expect to really care at all. But it has met my expectations, it has surpassed them and it's actually a good bit of fun. Holy, there, there's a guy! on his lid <laughs> ah, I have not seen that I've done several races against the AI here just testing things out and having a blast really I've never seen a car flying around like that it's, it's news to me But yeah, the Hungaro Ring. Just a little bit of background information. This has been perhaps my least favorite track in the entire world for a very long time. As in, since I was playing Formula One games on the Super Nintendo back when I was a small child. Yeah. Like, the amount of hatred I have for this track, you might think that this track did something to me or my family personally. No, I've just always have hated this track. But I have to say, I quite enjoy the race room version. Which is kind of a, a <laughs> kind of a very specific reason. A while ago, I had a uh, back and forth with a member of what is now Sector 3 Studios at the time, is Simbin. And I dial in tons of oversteer one, but uh, I basically said I hate the free-to-play model that you guys have chosen because, well, very often I find myself enjoying things that I didn't expect to enjoy and I wouldn't have actually paid for. Hungaro Ring? Not a chance I would have ever have purchased this track. Not within the race room racing experience environment. Just not happening. You know, it's not a track that I ever plan on racing that much, but. Hey, seeing how it's part of the package, went ahead and tried it out and naturally quite enjoyable. So long story short, free to play sucks. The whole idea just is silly. Kill it with fire. Which fortunately it seems like Sector 3 Studios is kind of a taking that approach. They're getting there. They're getting there. I have to say though, one thing with these cars, they do feel better than the 2013 version. The 2013 version to me just kind of felt like 
general understeer all over the place. And it really just felt very safety sealed. Like the game was trying to keep you from actually having a challenge, from actually having difficulty driving the car. The front end always wanted to wash out first. But it seems like with 2014, that behavior is definitely kind of toned down a good bit. And I really feel like this is actually a very fun experience. I know that wasn't a pun on the name. Like it, it's actually very enjoyable to drive. And you know, it, it's believable, I'd say. You know, you don't think of DTM cars as the most difficult cars in the world to drive by any means. Personally, I think of them as glorified Formula 3 cars with fenders on them. Because that is pretty much what they are now. Bring back the good old days, which they will be doing in a future content pack, but uh... Oh, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Man, these guys are just... <laughs> these guys are giving me a challenge. Give me a challenge, I have to focus, I have to concentrate. Thank goodness I don't have to select adaptive AI abilities. Just go ahead and set that up. Thank goodness I can just go ahead and say, hey, this is how long the race is going to be. Sector 3. <laughs> it wasn't that difficult. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. Like, really, one of the stories of 2014, I think, within sim racing really has to be the fact that Sector 3, formerly Simbin, has actually turned around a game with race room racing experience and its various experience offshoots in DTM and ADAC GT3 into something that's actually actually perhaps a contender. And you know, the fact that I'm actually kind of looking forward to what they can bring out next should actually say something. I continue to extend the track limits there. That's okay, nobody is looking this far down the pack. One thing I will say though, I do wish there was tire wear acceleration. Because with the mandatory pit stop rules, you know, it just kind of feels like that would add a little bit more excitement to the race. It's not very often that I do a full distance race in any game. And, you know, in situations like this where the tire rule is a thing where you do have the mandatory pit stops and it does actually work, and the AI will actually make a pit stop, you know, it just kind of seems like it should not put down so much power. But that'd be a good way to uh, improve things. As you can see there in the upper right-hand corner, the pit window is now open. I automatically have the prime compound selected because we are on the options. So we'll just go ahead and close that for now. Hopefully I can remember what buttons I need to press. Car's definitely getting a little bit more active. Uh, I will say though, besides the tire wear, my other main gripe, and really the tire wear isn't even a gripe, just a feature I'd like to see added, because it makes sense. I do not like these tires at all. Extra grip makes me overconfident. But I'd also like to see some settings for the AI in terms of aggression. Which is something that you typically have seen in pretty much every sim out there. That's based on the ISI G Motor 2 engine. Or whatever you want to call it, technicality. Which, 
you know, the behaviors I see really remind me of an R Factor 1 with too much AI aggression there. Very dive bomb happy. And they do a pretty good job of getting out of the way. They're not terrible, terrible. But I just feel like it could be better. And I should probably pay attention to the road there. Something going on outside. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I must have done some of the setup because it wasn't driving like this last night. Although my lap times aren't necessarily that far off what I was doing last night. But it is definitely more of a handful. going sideways to that chicane every time, but it's still fun. And I think really it should probably say something that even though I'm not a fan of DTM, even though I'm not a fan of this track, or hadn't necessarily traditionally been a fan of this track, I'm actually really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and make our pit and request. Because the pit window, I guess, does close the next lap. So we'll need to get that out the way. Otherwise, I'll have angry Germans yelling at me. I will say the AI also does kind of tend to be inconsistent. We do have DRS, I guess, so let's go ahead and use that. Which I guess the rule in DTM is if you're within a second of the car ahead when you cross the start-finish line, you get DRS, which is available to use at any point on the circuit. Which is pretty cool, pretty nifty. Doesn't really play too much of a factor here at this track with all the twists and the complete lack of straightaways. It's still a nice feature for the tracks where DRS is more of a factor. Things for sure, though. This definitely requires some concentration. Pit limit 50 miles an hour. Let's see if we can make a good hot pit entry. Okay, the AI will take over. Let's scroll down. Pit stop actions confirmed. There's no fancy animations or anything that's at least visible from them in the car, as you can see, but. Pit stops are better than no pit stops. The AI does basically do everything, which is quite lame, and you do drive through people. Apparently they went to the iRacing School of Racing. But, uh, yeah. I'd really like to see this also go away. This is player control resume crap. Come on. As soon as I cross the pit lane, at absolute worst, I should be back in full control of my vehicle. Really, that's just kind of... Again, I guess you could say griping, but I just kind of feel like there's things that this game does and has done that just kind of rub me the wrong way for no reason at all. And it's like I'm starting to enjoy it. Uh, but at the same time, I just feel like it could easily be better with just some... <laughs> okay, my fair in fairness there, I did kind of 
turn in on him slightly, but still. Time to catch that Audi and not get run over by everybody. My goodness, and passed. Hopefully this guy is on the option tires and that's why he's going fast. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not my driving skills deteriorating, which probably could be that. I think I have dialed too much oversteer into this setup. I didn't use DRS, that way we don't get passed from under braking here. My goodness! <laughs> My goodness! <laughs> Get that man's license plate number. <laughs> I think I might have set them up a little bit too strong for my ability level, but it's definitely a massive improvement over having to wait for the AI to actually calibrate and provide some form of challenge. Careful coming out of that corner. The sideways is cool, but the sideways is slow. Especially in a car like this, which has tons of downforce. There's absolutely no question though. <laughs> One thing that DTM Experience 2014 has done very well is make me sweat a lot. It's the amount of concentration that you need to need to use. And I am running a fairly strong force feedback setting. And it's just like you're constantly moving, you're constantly making corrections, at least with the way I drive. Definitely makes you work. Well, those BMWs have caught up to that Audi, but I ain't even close to that. I'm going the wrong way. Hopefully they'll get a little bit of payback for me. That would be, that'd be perfect. Seriously, this track, just having a blast. I can say that this is the best game I've ever played. This is the best driving game I've ever played, but I think really, especially if you're a fan of the DTM series, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a good time. Again, I really wasn't a fan of 2013. It's, it just didn't really do anything for me. This wasn't satisfying, but I have to say, even with the default setup, which you know, obviously I have tweaked, which is why the car is driving so sideways, but even still, it, it just felt different. You know, really, I think the improvements that have been made to race room racing experience over the last, you know, even just six months have really, really helped this title out. And I just love all the little bumps that you get with the track and the way your car reacts to them. The sounds on the final lap here. Which, that's another thing. 
That'd be very handy. Final lap notification, please. Uh. <laughs> oh boy, this car is so sideways. So sideways, we're flip flopping. Understeer, oversteer, all over the place. Right there, there's a very good example of the bumps. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I have to say, this this really has done a 180 for this platform. You know, it is definitely improving race room racing experience, ADAC, GT Masters, whatever you want to call it, the platform. 23rd. Oh, I got I got a penalty. Penalty. What? I'm protesting that. That's BS. You guys all saw I finished like in the back of the pack anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I didn't cheat. That Audi, he hit me, not the other way around. It's BS. Probably screw up the pit stop, in fairness, but uh, yeah. S just some small little things that I could really gripe about. And honestly, they kind of are a little bit of gripes, but really think that there is actually potential here. Maybe not necessarily in terms of the most impressive sim out there and the most realistic simulation experience available for your home PC, but still, very enjoyable. I can enjoy this. I can get behind this. I'm, I'm having a blast. I've been having a blast for the last couple of days with this, even on a track that I've hated for a very long time. I'm ready to say I like the Hungaro ring, but I don't hate it with a passion anymore. So, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Right, bye.